Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are winding down on the Comedy of Errors. We only have four days of it left, including today. So let's make them good ones, right? We're in Act 5. Um, there's only one scene in Act 5, so you can call it Act 5, Scene 1 if you'd like, but you don't have to. And today we get to hear from Adriana, who, okay, beginning of Act 5, we had Antiphilus of Dr and Dromeo of Syracuse. They had just run away from the courtesan with their swords drawn because they thought she was a witch. And they're like, we, we got to get out of here. But then we have Angelo talking to the merchant to whom he owes money, saying, I just need my money from Angelo. Angelo sees Antiphilus and Dromeo of Syracuse, is like, um, you owe me for that necklace. And why did you say that yeah, I didn't give you that necklace? And all this, all this back and forth leads to them all once again drawing their swords as if they're going to fight. But right then, Adriana and Luciana and the courtesan and a bunch of other people enter. And they're like, oh my goodness, my husband is loose again. Let's get him. But Antiphilus and Dromeo of Syracuse are like, nope. And they run and hide in an abbey. So yesterday we had Luciana and Adriana and that crew confronting the abbess saying, you know, give me back my husband. He went in there because he's crazy. And the abbess accused Adriana of driving him crazy by constantly wanting to talk to him, you know, that pesky thing that wives do when they see there's something wrong with their husbands. And Adriana's like, but we can, I need him back so I can help him and all that sort of thing. And the abbess is like, oh, no, that's why people come and seek sanctuary is because they need our help. So I will take care of him until he's better. You're not getting him. And she shuts the door in his face, in their faces. So Luciana and Adriana and all the rest of them are like, what now? And Luciana says, we'll take this to the Duke. Do you remember the Duke at the very beginning of the play? He listened to this merchant named Gion, who is a Syracusean found in Ephesus. And this is how we found out about the whole like death warrant thing if somebody's found in the wrong city. Uh, the Duke had listened to Gion's whole tale and decided that he had the full day to try to get his bail Otherwise, he would be put to death. So that duke, who's in charge of everything, Luciana's like, take your case to him, and he can help. Maybe he can get the abbess to, to bring Antiphilus out. And the second merchant is like, oh, the duke is probably going to be walking by right about now because he's, gonna, he's supposed to be executing somebody. So, as if on cue, the duke and a Gion and a whole bunch of people come through, and the duke is like, anybody? Does anybody want to put up the bail for this man? Because otherwise we're going to kill him. Anybody? Anybody? And Adriana starts to get in his face like, you know, your honor, I need to talk to you. And the duke is like, not now. Come and find me later. And Adriana says, may it please your grace, Antiphilus, my husband, who I made lord of me and all I had at your important letters, this ill day, a most outrageous fit of madness, took him, that desperately he hurried through the streets, with him, his bondmen, all as mad as he, doing displeasure to the citizens by rushing in their houses, bearing thence rings, jewels, anything his rage did like. Once did I get him bound and sent him home, whilst to take order for the wrongs I went, that here and there his fury had committed anon I wot not by what strong escape he broke from those that had the guard of him, and with his mad attendant and himself, each one with ireful passion, with drawn swords met us again, and madly bent on us, chased us away, till raising of more aid we came again to bind them. Then they fled into this abbey, whether we pursued them, and here the abbess, shuts the gates on us and will not suffer us to fetch him out, nor send him forth that we may bear him hence. Therefore, most gracious Duke, with thy command, let him be brought forth and borne hence for help. So she's pleading her case to the Duke from, from her angle anyway, because remember it was Antiphilus and Dromeo of Ephesius whom they bound and sent off, but then it has been Antiphilus and Dromeo of Syracuse who they have now seen in the streets twice with their swords drawn and who are now locked up in the abbey. So the Duke is like, oh, of course, I know you. I married you guys. I, I'm, I'll totally help. I'll totally bring out the abbess and I will talk to her. At which point a messenger comes running in and this messenger 
messenger is obviously on Antiphilus of Ephesus and Adriana's payroll because he comes up to her and, and he's like, my lady, my master has broken free. He set this guy's beard alight and then threw icky water on it and then got out. We're not sure how he overpowered everybody, but he's coming and he says that he's going to get you and like burn your face. And she's like, what? No, he's locked up in this abbey here. How could he be over there, and the messenger's like, I, I saw this happen. I saw him break out. It was definitely your husband, and he's coming this way. At which point, Antiphilus and Dromeo of Ephesus enter, and we'll pause there for today, because things are about to get really crazy. So I will see you tomorrow for more as we wrap up the last three days of the Comedy of Errors and see how all of this insanity, all of these errors, sort themselves out. I'll see you then for that. Mwah.